So this is from the domain of youth sports, which the martial arts can fall under if you're talking about a uh, competitive school or club. Let me look on the bright side first. I really like what was said in this article. I'll put a link to it below. It said, I think that the big lesson is you have to appreciate things as a lot more, said Burton. And I think the kids are really amazed, are realizing that. I, I can see that in every session. Every day I get a million thank yous. They are so grateful to be back on ice. Those thank yous just go right through you and make you feel good. Now he was talking about um, requirements for his youth hockey league and how they have to do uh, you know, social distancing, they have to work on skill drills and things like that because they're not allowed to compete right now. Now the other day on the news, I won't say who it was. I'm not even gonna say what sport it was in. There was a coach who was saying that he did not like the idea of social distancing going on with his players. And he really wants the state to hurry up and allow people to play again because skill drills only go so far. Yes, you can have your players go through skill drills and they can practice and be socially distanced apart, but in order to really improve, and we're talking about youth players here, in order to really improve, they need the high stress stakes of competition. Now, to be fair, I agree with that somewhat. If we're talking about professional athletes, if we're talking about professional athletes who make their living at that sport, then it's absolutely paramount for them to get back to playing as soon as possible. In fact, and I think some professional sports are doing this. Dare I say, I think if you want to keep professional sports going, you can have the athletes all take the COVID-19 tests. You have to test negative in order to be able to play in the game that day or stay with the team and the team is all living off off together everybody the coach the teams and all the people who assist the team whatever they're called whatever their roles are if you have anything to do with the team if you have anything to do with the game you all stay in one area or a series of buildings where everybody there is COVID-19 tested everybody's negative you only interact with each other throughout the season or throughout that time period of where you're competing so everybody's COVID clean, then they got to stay by themselves. You can't be going in and out of the safe zone, okay? You got to stay in the safe zone until your game of competition is over, then you can come home. And then before you come back to practice, you got to be tested. Yeah, that's fine for professional athletes. These are kids. And dare I say, if we were talking about the martial arts, competition is not everything that's in the martial arts. What about the character building aspects? What about doing it for exercise? Doing it to relieve stress. What about that? Doing it for health. See, if we were talking about this thing in terms of the martial arts, why would you want to risk their health? We're going to have to do socially distanced martial arts until you can come back in and they allow contact sports. Because it's hard to spar with each other at greater than six feet apart. And there are going to be people that definitely have a problem with sparring while they're wearing these. But at the same time, what are your goals with the martial arts, though? Are your goals self-improvement and self-defense? Are your goals getting in touch with your body? Are your goals exercise? You can definitely do that. And there are martial arts clubs and classes that are practicing their forms and their basics at a social distance and they're practicing them outside so the reason why i bring this up is i'm i'm quite sure i will put money on it but there are people in the martial arts who feel like man this covid thing is just so terrible forget it they're not you're not really doing real martial arts right now if you got to practice far apart from each other and you gotta wear a mask and stuff and you can't get up there and, and get up in each other's face you know that's this 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 terrible, terrible coronavirus is going to keep you from progressing in the martial arts. I say not necessarily. Because you have forms that you can do by yourself if you're in a punch kick style. I know you do. Judo, a grappling style, like that's the only grappling style I can truly speak on. That has some solo drills that you can do. And 
if you are a grappler who wants to practice until things are over, you can either, if you're fortunate enough to live with your partner, grapple with the person that you're living with, or you can buy a grappling dummy and practice on those techniques. You know, practice on those techniques until we can meet up again. If you're thinking about self-defense, especially in this day and age, we have more than enough videos, books, and media that you could study to get into the mindset of people who want to attack you and do you harm. There's a lot of literature and books out there, media, that you could use to find out how the attackers think. This is a good time for you to do some meditation and visualization. We can still exercise so that we are in decent enough shape so that if the stress of the attack comes on us, we don't have a heart attack just from the stress of the attack itself. You know? And you can, you know, like I was saying, you can get a grappling dummy and practice those techniques on it. Or you, dare I say, do some shadow fits and some shadow chokes and some shadow throws until we can get back in front of people. This does not, COVID-19 does not have to keep us from doing something. Maybe COVID-19 is going to make us realize that we need to appreciate what we have. And we can't, we shouldn't take it for granted because it's not, you know, everything that we think we can just go get, we can't always just go get all the time. You know, it's like my mother used to tell me when I was little. She said, your problem is you think you always going to have some of this stuff. You're not always going to have, baby. And of course, I didn't know what she was talking about. And now I do. Because apparently I'm not always going to have the ability to be in class in person. And it's just like I said at the beginning of the video, which is what actually Burton said. Let me get his first name because he said something so beautiful. Oh, boy. Excuse me while I... I should be ending this video right now. Now I'm dragging on. B-U-R-T-O-N. Nelson Burton. Because it's just like Nelson Burton said. I will end with that. Which, like I said, came from another discipline, but I am going to... Came from another sports category entirely. If I can get to it. I think the big lesson is you have to learn... No, you have to appreciate things a whole lot more. And I think the kids are realizing that. I can see it in every session. Every day I get a million thank yous. They are so grateful to be back on the ice. Those thank yous just go right through and make you feel good. Someday... We will be back in the dojong or dojo. We'll be back on the floor or the mat. And hopefully we will be grateful. And remember this time when we couldn't come together. And for those of us that still choose to get together, even though we're not supposed to get together in person, I can't tell you what to do. All I can say is I think you should find a way to do it where you're at least six feet apart and you're wearing one of these. And don't, don't shame people for wearing it. Don't shame people for not wearing it. Do your thing. I'm, this, I'm on my channel, on my channel, with my flock. We're doing Zoom. And sometimes on my channel, I'm going to wear these to show support for people who feel as though they should wear them. I mean, I feel like you should wear it too. That's how I'm doing it over here. You do what you want over there. And whether I agree with it or not, I can make a video saying I agree or disagree. But trust me, you ain't got to worry about me coming up in your face and roundhouse and kicking you in the head and throwing you or choking you out or whatever, trying to use a no-touch knockout on you because you wore a mask or because you didn't wear a mask. Understand what I'm saying? So thanks for watching this video. Like, comment, and subscribe. Please share this with people who like to talk, talk, talk about the martial arts. In peace. Thank you for your time. I really mean that. Because you could have watched another video, but you chose to watch this one. Where the kicks at? Where the pains? Where the holes? Where the throws? Your hands?